Well, hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody at this joyous occasion. Uh, it's a exciting time for us here at Abundant Life Ministries, and I think it's also an exciting time for y'all from Winterset <laughs> to see one of your sons stepping into the place where God's called him to be. And I just want you all to know I'm a rock. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm good, praise the Lord. But we're going to go ahead and get started here this uh, afternoon. Again, I just want to express my thanks to all of you for coming out. Um, this is an exciting time. You know, I think oftentimes churches like ours from Word of Faith, we don't necessarily have a installation service. You know, I've been in the ministry now for 40 years and I've never seen one. And so if we don't do it right, just forgive us uh, because we've never done this before. But I do believe that it's, uh, it's an important time. It's an important event that takes place within a body, within a church. And again, thank you for being here with us today to, to celebrate. So let's open it with a word of prayer and then we'll... Uh, we're going to have one song of worship, and so if you'd stand when we um, sing that and just worship our King, because ultimately uh, that's what it's all about. It's about glorifying Him. And so, Father, we're so grateful that we can gather today in the wonderful name of Jesus, the name that's above every other name, the one who we look to, the one we rely upon, the one who loved us so much that He came on our behalf and sent the Holy Spirit to live within us. And so as we come together today, this is a time of celebration. And so, Father, we welcome you in our presence. We want you to have your way. So we, we submit ourselves unto you, that your will might be done. And so, Father, as we've come together, we ask your blessing upon this time, that everything that's said and done will bring glory and honor to our King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank you in his mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet.
thankful for your love. We're so thankful that every situation we can trust you completely. That you've promised us that you'll never leave us or forsake us. So Father, we bless you today. We magnify that name, that wonderful name, that beautiful name. The name in which there is healing. The name in which there is deliverance. The name that we can always depend upon. The name of Jesus. So we thank you today that we can gather we give you all the praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, isn't he wonderful? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You can go ahead and see him. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're here today officially to install Pastor Isaac Wangler. And I'm a rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's pastor of this church. It's my honor, my pleasure to preside over this service as Isaac's grandfather and co-laborer in Christ Jesus. Believing that the gospel is going to truly be spread throughout this world that we live in. While there's no specific Bible references to illustrate installation as a pastor of the church, I believe that tradition is not without precedence. That there are examples that we can see in scriptures that show the installation and it goes side by side with ordination. And there's an order that goes along with that. A few weeks ago, uh, Isaac was ordained uh, by this church. And so today we're, we're continuing that process as we install him as pastor of Abundant Life Ministries. You know, the word pastor is just one of those terms, many terms that we find in scripture to describe a position. As you go through the scriptures, you see pastor, you see overseer, you see elder. And all of those words are descriptive words for the one who leads the local body, the one that we know of as the pastor. The Christian church, in Christian churches, there's verses that often refer to individuals being placed in a position and that's what we're looking at today is those different offices that are placed in position as a result of prayer, as a result of, of hearing from the Holy Spirit, and then as they're placed in that office through the ministry of the laying on of hands. As you're familiar with the scriptures you see in Mark, or excuse me, in Acts, the sixth chapter, where there were seven men that were chosen from the ch in the church. And they were set aside, and the way that they were set aside for the position to which God had called them to was through the ministry of the laying on of hands. We see the same thing with Paul and Barnabas. That it says that in the book of Acts that as they prayed, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. And the Holy Spirit said, set aside these two individuals for the ministry to which we've called them, to which he'd called them. So the thing that's important for us to understand is what you're experiencing today is not uh, us calling or setting Isaac in a position of pastor. He's already been called to that. He's already been set in that position by the Holy Spirit and by Almighty God. And so we come together today just as Paul and Barnabas were. It said that they laid their hands upon them to set them into the ministry to which God had already called them. And so God was called, had called Isaac as a young man. <clears throat> 
Uh, I, I can't help it. I got to stray here a little bit. Because um, the woman that heard Pastor Isaac's first message is here today. Wave at us. Is in the nursery. And she called Isaac's mom and dad in because he was behind this little pulpit that they had there and, and Isaac stood up and he said children I won't get it exactly right but I'll get corrected later <laughs> obey your parents you won't get a spanking <laughs> and then he looked over at Colt and said you have anything <laughs> I think he had listened to his dad a few times what do you all think so we're not setting him in the position. He's already been set in the position. Amen. It's the work of God. And so we're here today to be able to be part of God's actions. And we're just simply here to cooperate with him. Pastor Timothy, Paul laid hands on him and spoke, on him, spoke to him and we see later on in the, his ministry, Paul reminds him of the gifts that were imparted to, into his life as a result of the laying on of hands. And so we're here to set in place a pastor of Abundant Life Ministries. I'm going to read from the scripture from Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 14th and the 15th verses says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Aren't you so glad that we get to hear glad tidings of good things? Aren't you glad that the gospel of Jesus Christ is a good thing? And so really one of the primary things that we're doing here today is we're, we're commissioning, and what this scripture is talking about is commissioning somebody to preach. And I believe it's it's, it's the neglected part of the church today. But in my book, it's still the most important part because of what we just read. And so I'm going to go through this just a little bit. And I'm going to, as Paul, I believe he was inspired to speak these words concerning salvation. And so he addressed some things here. And I want to address them one at a time. And the first thing that he says is, how will they call on him whom they have not believed? And so he asks a question, and the answer is, they can't. It's impossible. I don't know about you, I believe because I heard. May not have been on a Sunday morning, but I heard somebody preach the gospel, and as a result of that, my life was completely changed. To call upon Jesus Christ would mean to worship Jesus as the Messiah, who is one with God and very God of very God, but how can people worship Jesus as the Messiah if they've never believed in Jesus Christ? To worship Jesus Christ, people must have a conviction of the gospel. The Greek word believes, to, to believe, means a strong belief or conviction. Belief in Jesus Christ is not an easy believism, it's a conviction. And we need to have a conviction of what Jesus, our Messiah, has done in our life as a result of giving his life so that our sins might be forgiven. But then there's a second question. How will they, how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And once again, the answer is they can't. It's impossible. The Greek word heard means to perceive, perceive one's voice or to understand. And so in other words, 
Preaching is to be something that we can understand. Those of you that were in our service this morning here at Abundant Life Ministries, as Pastor, as Pastor Isaac preached, did you understand? Yes. If you didn't understand, I was going to have an altar call right now and get you born again because you need some help. But we understood. And it was because of preaching. There was a conviction in our heart. I don't know about you, those four principles that he talked about. I want to see those four principles in play and in operation in my life. And so there's a conviction that goes along with it. Um, the, the next question is, how will they hear without a preacher? Well, once again, it's a question. And the answer to the question is, they can't. It's impossible. No one can call on Jesus until they've believed on him. And no one can believe on him when they haven't heard about him. And no one can hear about him without a preacher. The conviction and comprehension of the gospel are based on the preaching of the gospel. You know, <clears throat> my library is full. But you know what? There's only one book in that library that you can truly preach from and men, women, and children be convicted that they might receive Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And on some of those books it says the Holy Bible. And it's holy because it brings the true gospel to you and I so that we might have hope. You know, it's interesting, the word preach... In the Greek, it means to herald. Here's a couple of the defini definitions of it. To be a herald, to officiate a herald, to proclaim after a manner of a herald, always with a suggestion of um, fundamental gravity and authority. And so the first preachers, they were heralders. They would... They were criers. They would, not like me, they just <laughs> cried the word out. But there was a purpose behind that. So that it would bring conviction in people's lives so that they might receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so I don't know about you, when I hear that, I get a picture of those early disciples standing on corners, preaching the word that others might be able to hear, that they might believe. And lives as a result of that was being changed. You know, the Bible speaks over and over again of how uh, it, it, it was presented. We, we see it in the Old Testament on Mount Sinai. We see it in the tabernacle. We see it in the temple. We see God revealed through the sacrifices and through the high priest, through the holy days and the festivals. But you know, in the day that we're in, the way that Jesus is revealed is through the preaching of this marvelous gospel, this gospel of grace that's been entrusted to you and I to be able to preach. It's the Logos, it's the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. And the command that's been given to each of us is for us to share, to proclaim that Logos, the word. And so, in a sense, when we take this word and we begin to proclaim it, we begin to speak it, we give this word a means of expression we give it flesh and so others can hear and others can see how this this word is to be operating in our lives in 2 Timothy 4.2 we find this phrase preach the word preach the word that's what Paul told Timothy preach the word and you know Again, in the day that we're in, it seems that people are so straying so far from that. But that's where we have to focus our attention. And that's what I love about my grandson, Pastor Isaac, is that his emphasis is on preaching the word. You can't go wrong in preaching the word because there's life in that word. But then the next question is, how will they preach Unless they be sent. They can't. It's impossible. <clears throat> you 
You know, I'm so thrilled today as I look around the room and I see Nancy here with us and the Nazars are here with us and people that we have the opportunity to connect with as they're preaching the gospel throughout the world. But you know what? That's the commission to the church. That's the commission to each and every one of us. Here where he says preach the word, it, it comes from the Greek apostasan, something like that. We get the word apostle from it. And it means the sent one. We're so blessed here. Pastor Isaac is a pastor. But you know what? That same term applies to him because he's been sent to us. And I say that us from the standpoint of he's my new pastor. And so we're so blessed when we have a sent one that's been sent to us to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ so that we can believe, so that we can grow, so that we can experience the love of God as we can in no other way. You know, it doesn't come, you know, there, there, there's this power about preaching. There's something that we receive in preaching that we, we, don't, we don't get it just by studying. It doesn't come by listening and copying. It doesn't come by education or educational degrees. It doesn't come by the will of man. It comes by the preaching of the Word of God as we hear it and as we're able to take it and as we're able to apply it in each of our lives. In 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 16th verse, it says, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For I'm under compulsion. For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. That's how it should be in each of our lives. Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Therefore, I've got to preach the gospel because I have a stewardship assigned to my hands. I've got to preach the gospel because I've been commissioned from heaven. I've got to preach because I have been given a message from heaven. I've got to preach because God's sovereignty is released in preaching. I've got to preach because our destiny is wrapped up in preaching. I've got to preach because people because people are in darkness and Jesus is the light. Amen. I've got to preach because people are hungry and Jesus is the bread of life, of everlasting life. I've got to preach because people are sick and Jesus is the great physician. I've got to preach because people are dead and Jesus is the resurrection. I've got to preach because people are sad but Jesus is the joy of my salvation. Yes, he is. I've got to preach because people have been sold out in the market of sin but Jesus has purchased them back so that they don't ever have to suffer through bondage of sin again. I've got to preach because the world is lost. And Jesus is the Savior. I've got to preach because somebody is confused and Jesus is the wonderful counselor. I've got to preach because you're troubled and Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I've got to preach because somebody's been orphaned and he is the everlasting Father. I've got to preach because somebody has lost the way 
and is traveling the road of life alone. But we know the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I've got to preach. Because somebody is on sinking sand. And Jesus is a solid rock of salvation. I've got to preach. Because somebody is being attacked and mistreated. But Jesus is the rock of ages. The strong tower. The high tower. The fortress. The city of refuge. I've got to preach. Because you're tired and Jesus says, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I've got to preach. Because you're trapped and Jesus is the way. I've got to preach because you're being lied to and Jesus is the truth. I've got to preach. Somebody is lonely and he is a friend that sticks closer to a bro than a brother. I've got to preach because we have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. But Jesus is our advocate, our lawyer with the Father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way but through Jesus. You know, that scripture that we led, read, it talked about the feet, the beautiful feet, the beauty of the pastor. And it says, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things. Paul's quoting from Isaiah 52, 7. And he's talking about the message of the gospel. That those who bring the message of the gospel, they have beautiful feet. And you know, those feet are beautiful to two different sets of individuals. Those feet are beautiful to the mature believer. In the eyes of sinners and the carnal, God's plan is foolish. The preachers are fools. But in the eyes of mature Christians, we're beautiful. As we consider that we would, be not, uh, we would not be saved without the servant of God, who is commissioned by God to bring us the preaching of the good news, we'll find the servant and his message beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful message. But it's beautiful to another individual as well. It's beautiful to God. The service worship of the New Testament priest is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. When God views one eagerly, doing what he has commissioned him to do, certainly he is beautiful in God's sight. And so we're here today to celebrate something beautiful. The feet of the preacher. Because in God's eyes, they are beautiful. And so at this time, I'm going to have the elders of Abundant Life Ministries come forward. And they're going to conduct the installation service. Let me introduce to you the elders of Abundant Life. Steve Pope, Bill Sutton, and Aaron Schroeder. And because I'm still standing here, I'll do what I want. <laughs> I want you to know something. I admire my grandson and I love him. Um, but he really wasn't even on my radar. He's young. And uh, the Wanglers had just been out to New York. Max had just sung at Carnegie Hall, and so they'd been out there to be there with him. And 
Pastor Becky and I were going to be going to Arkansas to visit our son and grandkids down there. And uh, so I had uh, called Pastor Bruce and asked him if he'd want to preach for me that Sunday. And he said, I'd love to, but, you know, we're just getting back. I've got something that needs to be done this Sunday. I can't do it. He says, well, why don't you ask Isaac? He'd probably do it. And so I called Isaac and he agreed and he came and preached for me and I'm still in Arkansas and I'm getting these texts from my elders and they said, I think we found our guy. <laughs> and uh, so the reason that they're commissioning him is they are the elders of Abundant Life Ministries. They are the ones that have called him. And, um, and so I'm going to turn this over to them. Aaron? All right. Throughout history, God has called workers to carry out his will. Righteous Noah, was cho Righteous Noah was chosen to survive the flood and save his family through building the ark. Abraham, the man of faith, was selected to be the forerunner of God's holy nation, Israel. Moses, the man of God, doggone it, <laughs> was called to deliver his people from bondage. Jesus chose the twelve to be his apostles. I'm a, you know, I'm a Schroeder, okay? <laughs> so... The early church set apart those called to special work through prayer and the laying on of hands. We come, to, we come today to formally install Pastor Isaac Langler in the work of, to which God has called him. We, uh, we seek to honor only Christ, and Pastor Wangler is being set apart for that purpose. Let us ask God's blessing upon this occasion. Well, in a moment, we're going to pray together. But I just had a couple of things I wanted to say first. As, as I look out here across all of you, I, I know what a heritage Pastor Isaac has had. That most likely there's Sunday school teachers and people that have had to in instruct him in many different ways, mentors. Uh, I, I know that people from Winterset, people from Harlan are, are here too. and And so... This is really a humbling experience because you have invested in his life and now here at Abundant Life, we get to appreciate him all the more because of the things that you have done. And so I'm very humble that I get to do this. I'm very thankful for all the things that, that you have done. And so, um, you know, I pray this and, and I pray it to the Father. And, and I want you all to join in because of the fact that even though I get to speak the words, you know, this is all of us speaking this blessing over Pastor Isaac. So Father God, you're a God of order in our lives and you have given us your word just so that you can express your will through us. And so we thank you that we are able to speak in agreement with your word and know that you will be faithful to complete it. Father, uh, I know you have a great and marvelous plan that uh, in store for Pastor Isaac's life. We, we've seen that. We, we know that he has accepted you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He has studied. He has been ordained and now he's ready to become the pastor of this particular body of believers. You have made him with unique abilities and a special ministry to serve you. We know that you will be faithful in showing your will to him and as it is completed we will see fruition and contentment with your will. Father, we thank you that there are great works in store for Pastor Isaac. He is fearfully and wonderfully made to serve you. You have given him godly direction and the counsel of the Holy Spirit. 
We are so appreciative, Father, that you have brought this man to this body. Through the Holy Spirit's leading of him and of us, we will serve you and work to accomplish your will. So we willingly speak of our agreement with you, Father, as you stand ready to perform your word. You command us to do so. So, Pastor Isaac, I come in agreement with God's word that you have God's blessing because it is God's will and because it is for this body of believers. This blessing is on you, on your ministry, and on this church. I speak that you are blessed in this city and in this country. Blessed is the fruit of your body. Blessed is your work. Blessed is your land, your stock, your produce. Blessed are the tools of your work. You are blessed as you go in and when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to be defeated. The Lord will bless your storehouses. He will establish you as holy unto him. Others shall see you as being called by the Lord and have reverence toward you. Abundance shall be yours. The Lord will open up the treasures of heaven to you. The Lord will bless the work of your hand. You shall be a lender, but not a borrower. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You will not turn to the right or to the left, and the word of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. Your way shall be prosperous, and you will have good success. So we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your faithfulness to us in all these days. Pastor Isaac, if you will come forward, please. Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Matthew 9, 37. When he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into this harvest. Isaiah 6, 8. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. Have you, Isaac Wangler, prayerfully considered the responsibilities of pastoring a church? Have you weighed the work involved and sacrifices you may be called upon to make? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that the Holy Scriptures are the Word of God? to make you wise unto the honored privilege of pastoring God's people? I do, with all my heart. Are you motivated, not out of desire for position or earthly gain, but by the love of God and of your fellow men and the wish to glorify him and save them? I am. Will you strive to build up the church, the body of Christ, to prepare God's people for works of service, to labor for the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. I will. We endeavor to give, to live a life of love within your family and in the community, and also draw others to Christ through your example, as well as by your word. To the congregation, we have thoroughly examined qualifications of Pastor Isaac Wangler for the work of pastoring. As a servant of Jesus Christ, are you willing to accept our recommendation of him for official installation as pastor of this local church? If agreed, say we do. We do. Amen. Pastor Isaac Wangler, 
you have declared your purpose to give your life in the service of Jesus Christ in pastoring this church and receive the approval and acceptance of this church in, in order that you may be formally set apart for this holy calling. We will now kneel and receive the laying on of hands as we ask the blessing of God upon your pastorate. Join with me in prayer again. Father, uh, anybody else that, that's a pastor here is welcome to, to come forward. Please do. And join with me in prayer. Father, you rule and reign in our lives. And today we come to you with, with praise and, and worship in our hearts. You are the one who calls us into your service. And on this occasion, we praise you for this man who has heard your call and offers himself to the service of the pastoral ministry. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit's leading in his life, for his willingness to serve, for your leading of this body of believers into this moment. Father, we depend upon the leading of your Holy Spirit, and we declare that your Spirit will lead Pastor Isaac into wisdom and into the knowledge of your word. May his feet be swift, his hands outstretched, his tongue ready to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let him be true to your word, filled with compassion, holiness, and integrity. When discouragement comes, uphold him. In success, shield him from pride. Give him the boldness to make difficult choices, administrate with divine organization, and give an answer to those who ask for explanation. May your spirit work through him to do your will, to bring men to Christ, to build up the church, and to extend the kingdom of righteousness and truth. Be his constant companion, Father. May he be yours that his life will cause many to find salvation. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, we're going to do another song so we can all speak out words of praise and worship. Would you all stand with us to worship?
just a little off script you heard me say it on the night you were born the Lord told me that he is a man who will stand before me remember that because you'll have many opportunities in leading God's going to require you to take a stand to lead this congregation into the places that the devil doesn't want you to go, darkness doesn't want you to go, the world doesn't want you to go, but you're anointed to go. And before you knew one day, he had them all already written in the pages of your book. Amen. And then on a lighter note, I can't seem to stop telling you what to do. I was given the honor and the privilege of giving you a charge and I thought well Lord if you tell me to tell him what to do I'll do that the Christian ministry is both a great joy and a solemn responsibility may your first priority be to follow Christ Jesus called the 12 to be with him, first of all, even before sending them out to preach and to serve. Find time each day to renew your relationship with your Lord. Nothing's more tragic than a man who attempts to tell others about Christ, but who does not have Christ in his own heart. So I charge you to know the truth. As Paul instructed Timothy, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling correctly the word of truth. One of your tests will be the balance of giving yourself as needed yet at the same time keeping yourself from being spiritually and physically exhausted. So nourish your own soul upon the word of God so that you may finish your course with joy and the ministry which you've received of the Lord Jesus. And then you will find resources to share with those seeking your help. I further charge you to preach the truth Though the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, yet God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. In this day when truth is made to look like error, when error is widely proclaimed and accepted, preach the truth of God as it is in Christ. The pulpit is a sacred place. 
And when you stand in the pulpit, do you have a message from the Lord? Do you have a message today from the Word of God? So preach clearly so people can understand. Preach in love that they will follow. And finally, I charge you to live the truth. Keep your personal character blameless. They lay the law of kindness upon your heart and tongue. Be a servant, not a master. Persuasion is more effective than force. And lead by example. Rejoice with your colleagues in success and their success and keep yourself from ministerial jealousy. Refuse to measure your effectiveness through numbers. Be fruit-minded, not numbers-minded. Make time for your family. They need you and you need them. There are times when the most sacred work you can do is to rest. While being mindful of what God is doing in your field of ministry, look beyond your field and see God's larger work in the earth. Find a way to work with other Christians, believers, to extend the kingdom elsewhere. And in the words of the Apostle Paul, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Rebu rebuke, reprove, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, Evangelist and fulfill your ministry. May your life's work honor Jesus Christ so that at the end you may hear him say, Well done. I want to present to you your pulpit and your congregation. Isn't it incredible what God can do? Not today. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't normally get emotional or cry, but God is so good. I mean, He does things that we could not do. We could not make them happen on our own, but God does. He's so good. Well, I'm supposed to give few short words of acceptance and vision for the abundant life. And if you were in the service this morning, many of you, I know weren't, because you go to Winterset. <laughs> but I thought uh, this morning I'd just share for a couple minutes my words of acceptance and vision about where Abundant Life Ministries is, is going. And so you can be seated while I speak. This won't be real long, but I wanted first to say thank you to Pastor Dave and Pastor Becky, the elders here at Abundant Life, and the congregation who have already accepted and, and welcomed me as their new pastor, and to all of you others, family and friends that I've known for many years or some more recently, thank you for being a part of what God's done in my life and being a part of getting to this place. Um, and above all... I want to pray and say thank you, Father God, 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit for your power, for your grace and your anointing operating in my life and making me able to stand in the position of pastor. Thank you, God, for the call you placed on me long ago and for your faithfulness to keep it and keep it alive and burning in my heart. I accept this ministry position with great honor and reverence. With zeal and anticipation, I look to the future of this church. Our faithful God will have his way in and through this place. God will be glorified here as we look to him as the giver of every good and perfect gift. As the author and finisher of our faith, as the one who has good plans for our future, as the one who causes growth to come, and as the one who calls us as co-laborers with him. I say yes today to being led by the Spirit in directing this church. I say yes to preaching and teaching the Word of God, submitted to the anointing and the direction of the Holy Spirit. I say yes to ministering for the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of the ministry to edify the body. Joshua 1 verse 7 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you, the word. Do not deviate from it, turning neither to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. And so today, I commit to be strong and very courageous, the man that God has called and placed to lead here today. I'll be careful to obey the word not deviating from the course God has laid ahead. And under God's leading, we will be successful in what we do. As methods of communication and application change, we will continue to be effective at preaching the gospel, being vessels for God to show himself to mankind through, and living in the abundant life for the kingdom today. We will be a family church where people can come for love, acceptance, care, and support the way a healthy family provides those things. We will be an evangelistic church, a place that continues to take the command to go literally by going into our world with a lifestyle, word, and conviction of truth uncommon to the world. We will be a place of refuge and refreshing. When people come into contact with us, they will experience the body of Christ in a way that brings peace and allows his restoring, refreshing power to work in their life. And we will be a launching pad for ministries. We will support, equip, train, and encourage people to go into the world as a minister, a disciple of Christ. Today, we commit to love, reach, restore, and launch into our world for God's glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming.